Say what you will about MSI, but they do crank out obscene pre-builds at a frankly impressive rate. And MSI doesn't let boring things like practicality, thermal limits, or copyright law get in the way of their eccentric experimentation. And today's system is no different, so let's check it out. Today's video is sponsored by the Deepcool AK lineup of coolers, a collection including the AK620, AK500, and AK47. Different shapes and sizes that fit in many budgets and use cases. I've been using the AK620 in my main system now for ages, and not only does it look great, it also works very well. And if you don't like the standard silver, you can also get them in zero dark. If any of these Deepcool coolers have piqued your interest, check them out using the link in the description below. Thanks Deepcool for sponsoring today's video. Now I was made aware of this MSI system on eBay by a Patreon who also happens to have a tech YouTube channel which I'll have linked in the description below. And not only that, but they also contributed a considerable amount of the asking price of this system. So thank you very much Carrie, I really appreciate that and with that let's check out the system. Ooh. Oh yes, eBay packaging. Oh, this is actually it. Yeah, I'd say it's about as haphazardly packaged as you'd expect, but it seems fine. But other than the system, we have a power cable and that's about it, cool. Oh, it's so gross. Oh, there seems to be hair stuck in what I can only imagine to be butt juices on it. Okay, well, I've given it a minute and made peace with the fact that we did buy it off eBay, so pubes are kind of a given. But putting that aside, look at it. It's like a like an MSI version of a trash can Mac, which apparently comes with an i7 in it. It even seems to have the same thermal design of having like a top fan that pulls air with the help of convection through the case, which is pretty exciting. Except the top vents on this one are all angular and gamery. Also dirty. And then back here, underneath the Dragon, which the Mac Pro disappointingly doesn't have, we've got pretty good rear I.O. We've got a bunch of USB ports and even dual gigabit Ethernet. And down here next to the pew, we've got two USB-C and two display ports. And finally on the system's undercarriage, we've got a bunch of ventilation and this little nub is where you plug the power cable in. Now I'm hoping that bit isn't the entire power supply, but we'll figure that out once we open up the system. But on that note, I just want to power up the system and make sure it works before I potentially break it during the teardown, because I can't imagine this is going to be easy to take apart. Anyway, let's quickly do that. Ew. Ah, oh, it's so sticky. Do you know what? Do you know what I need here? Not Valida, because apparently I lost my Valida gloves, which is a travesty. I will buy more at some point, but I have to settle for these work gloves. I don't know if these are biohazard rated like the Valida gloves, but at least it's a barren. So I guess now we just... That's not a good start. Is the power on? Oh, that is, that is really not a good sign. It, it is very much plugged in. My initial diagnosis was not promising. I, I don't think it works. But after spending a bit more time struggling with it, I had an idea. The first thing I want to try is to just plug a monitor into it and see how it responds. I don't think it's going to make a big difference, but let's see. You never know. No way, it actually turned on now. Look at that, it works. Very good. Now let's tear it apart. But before the teardown, I wanted to give it a quick wipe down with cleaning liquor to cleanse it from its previous life as a gaming system in a brothel. So now comes the fun part, opening it up and figuring out how MSI screwed up the thermal solution. Then we should just be able to Oh yeah, that pops right out. And that is actually metal. That's pretty cool. 
Oh, and then I think you... Whoa, you just pull the sides off. Oh, do that. And then you try and ignore all of the interesting stuff that we're seeing while unplugging that little clip for the RGB. Oh, that's not nice. Oh, that is fascinating. So the first thing we see here is the graphics card. And I think this is a GTX 1060, which will give you a rough idea of when this system came out. And what's interesting about the cooling solution on it is that it's passive. You can see that there's no fans or anything going on. We've just got quite a not dense fin stack, which here it is compared to a more normal GPU cooler fin stack. And then I'm guessing air just gets pulled through it by the fan in the top of the system. So I'm very interested to see the temperatures on this. And next to that is a slot for another graphics card, which is pretty cool, uh, which funnily enough, seems to also use an MXM slot, like that Alienware laptop I upgraded. So you could get this MSI trash can Mac with two graphics cards in it, which is pretty terrifying. And next to that MXM connector, we've got an M.2 slot with nothing plugged in, but you do have the option. And then behind that GTX 1060, we have our RAM slot. So it uses laptop RAM uh, and there is actually an additional set of slots behind that. So you can drop four sticks of RAM in here. And then behind this rear I.O. is the main motherboard. This is our CPU cooler, which again is kind of passive because it doesn't have a fan attached straight to it. It's just got like a whole system wide fan at the top. As far as I understand, under this cooler, we have an i7-7700. So we've got all these little motherboards around the power supply in the center of the system. This is quite a neat design MSI stole from Apple. And I think this is the point of the video where I jump to the future uh, because I'm gonna go test this now before I tear it down further, uh, but you'll just see the rest of the teardown process. So I guess our first order of business in the future is to remove the graphics gun. Oh, it's so sticky still. It doesn't feel like that did a whole lot. So let's just undo screws until something happens. And the last screw down here is kind of blocked by the front bit of the case. So I'm guessing I'm gonna have to remove this first. But after undoing the screws, removing that front bit proved challenging. Uh, oh, there we go. Wow, that process was more dramatic than expected, but I got the front bit off and now we have cleaner access to the graphics cards. But with the front bit out the way, I wasn't out the woods yet. I still couldn't get the graphics board out, so I decided next I needed to tackle ripping off the top of the case. Oh, oh yes. That's quite a lot of separation that's happening. And I think the last couple of screws that we need to undo are the ones up here. I mean, can I take the, this off first? Oh, there we go. So this beauty is all of the active cooling. And you can see it's, it's just a huge blower fan. And it, ha oh, and it has a whole bunch of little cables that come off it, which means this Dragon logo actually lights up. That's something you won't see on a Mac. And then this is a much better top-down look at the layout of the case. So we've got the two kind of GPU bits over here. That is the CPU bit of the motherboard. And then that middle part is the power supply. It's just in a slot that's quite tight. Yeah, there you go. Ew, ha long hair, I hope that's mine. Looking at this, the system's kind of like a laptop hybrid because we've got this MXM laptop GPU that they're adapting to the dustbin system using a PCI Express daughter board. Another weird thing about this GPU setup is that all of the screws that hold the MXM board in place are underneath the cooler, so we're gonna have to remove that first. Yeah, I can pull that off now. And that's what our GPU heatsink looks like. I love that look of like aged heatsink copper. It's always cool. And then this is our 1060 with very dry thermal paste on it. We definitely need to replace that. But you have to also undo this standoff. Damn, these are really stuck down there. 
But either way, there is our fully naked GPU. Mm. That that feels perfectly reasonable. What? Look at the angle that this is having to happen at. What? What is? Oh, that is a really stupid process. Holy louder. So what happened there is you have these standoffs that when the motherboard's mounted, it actually is flush all the way here and you have to pull it off, like bend it out and then, oh, what a terrible process. And then under there, we have our CPU board, which also connects via PCIe to the kind of main hub in the bottom of the system. Uh, but let's get this cooler off and have a closer look. Whoa, that is remarkably dry thermal paste. I'm surprised nothing exploded. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna replace that. But as you can see under that, we have our 7700. And then there is our power delivery. And then the final thing before I put this back together and do some gaming on it and see what the thermal paste changes did, this is the power supply. 450 watt power supplies. I'm really hoping they had higher end ones for SLI systems, even if they are using laptop GPUs. And after that wishful thinking, I laboriously reassembled the system to test the effect of the fresh new thermal paste, which went well. Oh, I didn't reassemble it correctly. But that's later's problem. First, we need to have a look at the initial testing. Pretty clear that the seller installed a fresh copy of Windows on here because we don't have a ridiculous MSI background and there's no bloatware on it. I'm 100% sure it didn't come from the factory like that, so that's good. Now putting aside the, the, the wine, Temperatures, at least on the GPU initially, are really good. It's under 50 degrees Celsius. It's not being utilized very much, but still, you know, that's really impressive. Performance-wise, it is running well. Uh, this is at 1080p high settings, and as you can tell from the frame time graph, which was suggested by a viewer, uh, it, it's running stably. The game, the game feels nice and smooth. But let's move over to a game that doesn't regularly have systems running it basically at idle. Wow, Battlefield 5 at 1080p medium settings is running very well. And surprisingly for an MSI pre-built, despite a bunch of Battlefield having happened already, we don't have temperatures that are mimicking the center of the sun. Although the CPU is getting up there and it's pretty noisy. Now all the hardware is showing its age a little bit, considering that this is 1080p low settings, it is still Playable. Cyberpunk does have a tendency to feel a bit sluggish below 60 frames per second, but again, very playable. And because AMD is not NVIDIA, we also have the option to turn on some Fidelity FX. And just like that, with a little bit of Fidelity FX going, it's running better. Although you can really tell the fidelity effects. Ooh, big accident. Uh, but yeah, th there's quite a lot of smearing and stuff happening in, in, especially in the very contrasty areas. Okay, so at 1080p low settings, Last of Us is running. Uh, now, the same with Cyberpunk. At 40 frames per second, this game feels quite heavy. Heavier than like... GTA 5 does at 40 frames per second. So it's it's not a great experience, but it's it's running. So the system still works well, and despite the higher noise, the temperatures are better than I was expecting. But how much did the thermal paste application help? And could I get the system running again? Oh, I didn't reassemble it correctly. This ribbon cable came loose real easy, so I think that's the culprit. Let me plug it back in and see. Okay, it's not turning on. So maybe it refuses to run with the outside panels off? A few moments later. Okay, attempt 9000. Well, the top bit lights up now, that's good. That's less good though. So it clearly wasn't one of the 800 ribbon cables being loose, which meant I just had one idea left. So I've swapped over from the HDMI to mini display port, which is a long shot, but let's see if that helps. Oh, thank lord. I, I just broke the HDMI somehow, but at least the display port works. 
So the repaste is a bit of a mixed bag. We've got slightly lower temperatures on the CPU, but the GPU is slightly higher and it's still as noisy. So all that effort wasn't really worth it. Which brings me to the end of a particularly frustrating teardown. Thank you very much, Carrie, for helping out with the system and thank you everybody for watching. Bye-bye.